sketchy. So today, we are not in the driveway. We're actually in an honest to goodness paint booth, which is so nice. I've never shot paint in a paint booth before. So this is the F450 frame. We're gonna put a Cummins in there. We're gonna put a 79 dead side body on top of it. And then we're gonna go to driving the crap out. Today we're gonna paint it, make it look a little nicer, and uh, see how she goes. I should probably say that this is not a how-to video. This is just how I did it. I'm not a painter. I never claimed to be a painter. I don't even want to be a painter. I'm just here because I'm too cheap to pay somebody else to do it. So we'll see how this goes. So I don't know if it shows it on camera, but this frame is a little bit tweaked. It's about an inch taller on this side than this side. The springs is, gives it about a half inch different, one side then about a half inch more than the other one. I put a level across this hallway, got it leveled up, kind of jacked it up on jack stands, got the springs out of the equation and checked it out. So I got the frame sitting on some jack stands and a level and we're about 0.6 degrees on the back of the frame. We're at zero in the middle of the frame and 0.6 on the front of the frame. I think this frame just over the years having overload being overloaded with that big dump bed on the back and stuff it's a little tweaked but i think it's close enough we're going to run it as is as opposed to try to straighten it and if i tried to straighten it i'd probably mess it up worse than what it is so it should be fine all the crucial measurements look good from uh, axle to axle and all that fun stuff so it should be all right so this is my brand new harbor freight paint gun i'm just putting a end on it for my hose. I'm gonna put a little pipe tape on there, whatever it's called, and uh, get this thing set up so we can go to painting. So I do have a regulator over on the other side, so this pressure will be regulated. So I just gotta figure out what the pressure is, but yeah, should be good. So I gotta run some mineral spirits through this. Uh, brand new gun, it's probably got oil and stuff in it. Just clean it out real quick before we go to painting. Maybe get an idea of how it's gonna spray. Rust-Oleum says to mix their product with mineral spirits, so that's what we're gonna do. This is my first gun like this. I have an old siphon one from Harbor Freight that I used for a few different paint jobs and stuff, but I haven't used that thing for like 15 years, so I did the right thing, spent 25 bucks at Hobo Freight and got a new whatever spray gun. So yeah, here we go. Let's see how this thing sprays. about six, seven inches or something from your thing. Yeah, it's spraying it. I don't know what my pattern looks like, but I think I need to sew the product down. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> this is sketchy. We do need to clean this frame though before we go any further. So I'm sure this is not 100% perfect way to go, but this is the Harbor Freight mask, and these are some kind of filter it's supposed to filter out paint fumes. I don't know, but it's it's better than nothing. So this is what we're gonna go with. Got the mask on. Ready to film some painting. scary part part that I don't like we're gonna start mixing paint hopefully get my ratios somewhat close enough to spray through that gun and uh, gonna start laying down some primer so this is the rust-oleum primer and according to the label it says you can reduce it to 15% but everywhere I've looked on the internet and everywhere else says at least 25% to reduce it so we're gonna start 
I'm gonna do like a three to one to one mix and see how that goes. Got it all together, gonna to see how it shoots. It's not bad. It's the orange came up, but it's not running off there. semi-gloss black and the reason that I'm going with semi-gloss instead of gloss or flat I don't want it too shiny and the flat black in my opinion seems to kind of hold the dirt and stuff a little bit more so you want it a little slick so the dirt grime will slide off of it no problem so I don't know maybe that's just me but that's that's the paint we're gonna go with we're gonna stir it up we're gonna mix it up we're gonna mix it three to one three parts paint one part reducer and then I'm gonna throw a little bit of hardener in there. Paint kind of a little bit tacky on the frame right now. I wish it was just a little bit drier, but uh, it should be fine. We're just gonna go ahead and run with it. Hope for the best. So the way I got this kind of set up and spraying, it's spraying uh, a lot of orange peel and whatnot but on this it doesn't really matter but it's not I don't have a lot of product going on it because there's so many spots and nooks and crannies for the paint to hang up and run that I'm trying to kind of hold the product back a little bit the product I mean the paint so yeah the process is taking a little longer but I think I'm getting less runs doing it this way so we're gonna keep going this way
got it all painted. It's not the most perfect thing, but it is most definitely black. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Considering Rust-Oleum paint, the prep job we did, and Harbor Freight tools. So, but yeah, it turned out good enough for what this truck is, and we're gonna move on to the next step. But in the meantime, I got some packages that delivered the other day. They are from Diesel Conversion Specialist, and I'm pretty excited. So we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go open them up and see what we got. So the decision has been made to put the Cummins back in this truck, which is a 79 dent side crew cab, Cummins motor, ZF six speed manual transmission, F450 frame. So the 7.3 is gone. It's sold and we've moved on. So this, this here box is from Diesel Conversion Specialties. They are not a sponsor. I wish they were, but I'm just a wee little channel. So I had to pay for it. <laughs> anyway, so this is the motor mounts. Pretty excited about it. I haven't opened the boxes yet. Been waiting until me and Erica had the time to be together to film it. So let's open this up together and see what we got. Got the old man tool out. It's almost sharp enough to cut whatever this kind of tape is, cardboard packaging tape. This is this is good stuff here. Okay. So, so out of the box says this is motor mount. Ooh. Dang. So basically this is so you can set the 12 valve Cummins into the Super Duty and I'm sure it depends on what year it is, but mine's a 99. So Cummins into the Super Duty frame. So look at that mount. That's got to be at least 3 8 steel. That uh, kind of appears to be a little bit of overkill, which is a good thing. Because who knows, maybe I'll go crazy with the power upgrades on this someday. I have got way too much stuff here. There's the other side. So I got some bolts that came with it. Obviously the mounting hardware. Let's see, there's more stuff in here. Ooh, look at that. Dude, that is extremely heavy duty. So that's, that even might be even thicker than 3 8 That's, they were not messing around. The welds are super nice. Man, I can't wait to install these. These are pretty sweet. Not sure how this is all gonna work out, but I'm assuming this probably bolts to the Cummins. That probably goes through that hole, something like that. And this bolts to the F450 frame. Don't quote me on that. I just got them out of the box. Haven't read the instructions. Anyway, these are the motor mounts. First look at them. I am extremely happy with them. They are very well built. So this is the conversion clutch. This is also from Diesel Conversion Specialties. Um, so this will take, so you can mount the ZF6 manual transmission behind the Cummins 12 valve. So open it up, see what we got, see what it looks like. Okay, looks like just a normal clutch. So there's the clutch. There's a pressure plate underneath it. Comes with a throw up bearing. Comes with the alignment tool. And hopefully we have a uh, pilot bearing in here somewhere. It may be in the other box. It's part of the conversion. So this is the input shaft out of the ZF6. And I'm just gonna double check, make sure the splines are correct for it. Yeah, so yeah, it's the right one. That'll work. It's heavy. Make no mistake about that. So I'm thinking this is, should be the flywheel. Hopefully my bearing's in there. Did you look at that? There's the pilot bearing right there. So this should mount right up to the crankshaft on the Cummins 12 valve. And then clutch will mount to that. So that converts everything. It's got the starter ring gear on it. It came with bolts. So pretty awesome, pretty impressed. One more piece. Okay, this should be the adapter. Let's take a look at this. Ooh, look at that. It's shiny and stuff. So this is the adapter that'll bolt on the back of the 12 valve. And then it'll bolt to the front of the ZF6. ZF6 manual transmission. They said that you're supposed to use a 6.0 starter for this, so that my case was missing a starter bolt. Um, so this will also take care of that problem. So let's just double check this, see if it fits on the case. So there's, right there is where I'm missing the ear for my starter, how it originally goes. It's supposed to go like that. Oh, look at that. That is nice. So I obviously have my transmission tore apart. It's in pieces. This is the front part of the case. So 
yeah that's how it'll bolt on there when it goes in the truck so so far i'm super impressed with the products it's looks like good quality heavy duty stuff and it's gonna hopefully work awesome so that's about all we're gonna get done for the day next time we are working on this truck we're gonna be pulling the motor out of this truck which i know it doesn't make a lot of sense pulling a perfectly good running truck apart but it's gonna go on a heavier duty frame and then we're gonna build it up from that and also gonna be a lot easier to put that zf6 manual transmission in thanks for watching like comment and subscribe hey!